Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I've got a pretty decent project for you guys. I had a problem where my ISP, the download speeds were dropping significantly and causing me problems. Couldn't even join video calls. If I was going to go on a call, then it would cut out halfway through. Really, really frustrating. Now I needed some evidence to back up the drops because coincidentally each time I called up they would run a test and yet coincidentally it'd be working just at that time but not the majority of the day so I needed a way to prove that it wasn't working most of the day. So this came up with the project idea of an a speed test monitor so I thought I'd put it together maybe someone else could make use of it if not then it's just a fun project anyway. So let me take you through what this actually covers because there's a few moving parts to this. So introduction, I've given you a mini one, but I'll cover that more in a second. We'll cover off the hardware that you actually need to do this project. I'll do the project overview and segment it so you kind of know what it's going to involve, how much time, etc. We'll then install Speedtest CLI version. So it's the command line version as opposed to the GUI. So if you do a speed test, you just go onto the GUI and you run a speed test. We need this in command line version so we can actually automate it later on. You could run this off PowerShell on a Windows machine, but we're going to do it off Bash and do that on a Raspberry Pi instead because it's actually more cost effective to do this, especially if you're going to automate the, the speed tests through long intervals all the way through the night and you want it in the early morning. You might want to identify exactly where the problem occurs and try and match it to a pattern elsewhere. It might be relating to works going on, an update they did at the exchange etc so the more data you have over a prolonged period of time the more likely you're going to be able to narrow down and link it to a particular issue we'll then have a script to actually run the test so we'll move away from just manually going on the website clicking a speed test we'll have a script to run that for us we'll then check that script to make sure it gives us the data that we actually need it to then we want to automate that because we don't want to keep running the script but like through the whole day, especially we could be at work, busy, asleep, etc. We want it running all the way through the day, week, etc. Then what we're going to do is visualize the data uh, so it's ready to present to the ISP should you need to. So without further ado, we'll get started. Now, as I mentioned, the purpose of this project is to collate data to identify trends and help answer any questions from the ISP, including their own tech support or engineer. The more details you can give them, the more likely they are to be able to help you. Now, if you do want a Windows version, so you want to do it in PowerShell on a Windows machine, it is possible, but bear in mind your electricity cost of leaving a Windows machine is going to be more than leaving a, a little Raspberry Pi on overnight or days or weeks. So that's why I chose the Raspberry Pi. But if you want that, leave a comment down below and if I get enough interest then I might do the PowerShell version as well. If you've got a Raspberry Pi though I'd recommend you use that instead. Now, in terms of prerequisites on that note so you'll need a Raspberry Pi. I've got the 3B plus but it should run on almost any as long as it's got a network adapter. You need an Ethernet cable so we don't want to be running tests over Wi-Fi if it's got it. The 3B plus does but you want this to really be as robust as possible you don't want any problems with the wi-fi interference you want to rule that out so you want to plug it in through the ethernet and make sure that there's no issues on that if you've got speeds that are very high so let's say over 500 megabits per second then obviously you want to be making sure that your ethernet cable is rated accordingly i'll leave a link in the description below making sure that you don't have a bottleneck on your ethernet you know a long time ago that wouldn't have been a problem but as internet speeds get faster and faster you need to just be bearing in mind the cat level or what the rating is of the cable itself so if you're trying to measure speeds of 500 megabits per second you want you know something rated for a gig or more so that you've got enough buffer in there with your raspberry pi you want the raspbian os installed i've got a fresh install on this machine so it should replicate your system. Obviously, versions are going to change. Okay, so let's get on with the first part, which is to install the Speedtest CLI. Now, I'll show just what my version is. So if we do lsb release, okay, 
that is the current version I'm on. So I'm on release seven, bullseye. So if you've got that, then everything should work exactly the same. If the version changes, there's probably going to be little nuances here and there. Leave a comment, and if you get stuck, I'll try and help you as much as I can. As with any good practice, we need to make sure our Raspberry is up to date. So just in case you didn't know, you can concatenate those two commands together, including the yes, rather than doing it in three separate commands. So if we press enter, that'll go out and check and update as needed. Lovely, so that's now all up to date, so we can continue on with the next step. What we need to do is install some packages so we can add the package repository for the speed test CLI software. Now there may be changes coming in where you don't need to do this but at the moment it's best practice to do it just to avoid any unnecessary problems so it's sudo apt install apt transport https space gnu eg1 dir mngi got the release lsb dash release and a yes and we'll press enter now the App Transport HTTPS package is used to add some support for the HTTPS protocol to the app package manager. Now without it, app would potentially throw errors when trying to connect to Ookla's package repository. Additionally, we also need to install GNU PG1. Now this package is used for the secure communication between the Raspberry, your Raspberry Pi and the speedtest.net servers. We then install the DIR manager, DIR manager if you want to call it that. This package is used for handling the addition of the package repository to your Raspberry Pi sources. Finally, the last package we install is called the LSB release. We use this package to grab the operating system's release name, as we did right at the beginning of the video. Now, with the packages we need installed, we can now add the GPG key for Ookla's speed test repository to the keychain. We need this keychain to be able to download the speed test command line interface to our Raspberry Pi. Now these commands, I'll put these in an article on my website and on Medium. I'll put the links in the description below and then what you can do is just copy and paste rather than trying to type it out. So we're using curl or command line URL and then the link is HTTPS. Right, that should be okay. Now, without adding this repository, we might not be able to install the speed test CLI to our Raspberry Pi. Now, the next bit that we're going to do is input echo, deb for Debian, and then this is sorting out the package list. So we want sign by equals forward slash, and then that file path, keyrings, forward slash, speed test CLI, archive, keyring dot gpg, and then we want the, the HTTPS link. That was packagecloud.io forward slash ookla forward slash btest dash cli. Now we want forward slash debian forward slash dollar sign. And in brackets, we want ls release ds main asterisk. Then we're going to pipe in sudo e and then the file path the etsy dot apt sources dot list dot d forward slash btest dot list and press enter so as we needed to add a new package to the repository we also need to update our package list so we'll run the update again and if you want to bring back commands from previous you just use the up up arrow key now we can install the official speed test cli so all we do is sudo apt install speed test hopefully you don't get an error so let's have a look so press enter okay so it's unable to locate the package speed test Okay, so this may be due to an issue with Ookla sending the data back, even though you may be able to install via sudo apt install CLI. Do speed test CLI. That will get you past this step, but you might fi face issues later on. So we'll go through with speed test CLI, and that's now working. Now we can now test that we have installed the speed test software to our Raspberry Pi. So if you just put speed test and press enter, so what we're effectively doing, instead of you going on the website, clicking here, and then pressing go, what we're doing is we're doing it in the command line interface. Okay, so it's all clearly working okay. Now you should, at this stage, get the option to accept the license agreement. If you do, that's good news. We haven't, so we might encounter a problem later on. And that might be because we installed the speed test 
dash CLI version. Okay, so the first part of our project is done and out the way. So we've installed speed test onto our machine. Next bit that we're going to do is create a script to run this command. And what we're going to do is use Python to write our script. The Python script will continually monitor our download and upload speeds. Otherwise, we'd have to sit there all day doing a test every interval of whatever time frame we choose. Now, to begin creating the Python script, make sure that you're in the home directory. If unsure, then just cd all the way back to root. Now, we're going to open up the editor. So that's going to be nano do speedtest.py. That's what we're going to call it. So we're just creating a script and we're going to write our code within here. So what we want to do is copy some code in here. Go over to my website. Okay, so this is how the speedtest.py script should basically look. And this is the correct indentation code etc so we'll come out of that okay so we've got our directory speedtest.py is just here we did that with the make directory command .py. okay so let's now test the script I need to change the keyboard layout now press enter there's a brief pause, which is usually a good sign. And as soon as it goes back to the command line, we should be able to go and retrieve our data. There we go. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So it just goes back to where it was. Now, unfortunately, if you get an error saying unrecognized arguments with the accept license, then it's likely that you didn't get the prompt when you ran speed test earlier. So what you'd need to do is amend the script and take those license agreements out but you are likely to have more problems move on to the next section which is to view the speed data so what we do is go nano speed test dash speed test dot csv and now we can see here are the speed tests coming in so if you scroll to the bottom you'll have the most recent ping result so as you can see the time on my pc is 2026 or 826 and this was at 825 and then you can see the results here so that's the download and that's the upload speed. Here you can see previous ones that I've done where in which case one has failed. So these are the intervals that I had it set to. Now let's move to the next part, which is making sure that we can run and automate this Python script regular intervals so we don't have to sit there running the script ourselves manually at the keyboard. So what we can do is use crontab in Linux to run this for us at set intervals. The easiest way to run your script to run every so often is to make use of the cron tab. So if we exit out of here, we'll go to cron tab and that's dash E, cron with an N. And if you're asked what editor you want to use, recommend that you just select nano as it's the easiest to use. Um, you might need to enter the number one. Now within this file, we need to check the following, add the following cron job. To the bottom so if you scroll all the way down you need to add this section here the section that i'll highlight is what you're adding now what this is saying is that each 15 minute intervals it's going to run that script so this is in minutes so if you want this every hour it'll be dash 60 if you want it every minute it'll be dash one so all you'd have to do to use a different timing is just change this number here now for the first time you do it what i suggest you do is just change that to one like so and it would run every one minute now the reason i say that is because then if there's a problem you're not waiting 15 minutes to find out it didn't actually work so have it at a very short interval just to test it works and then once you're comfortable and happy then set it to the intervals that you actually want to monitor on. So once you've got that in, do control X and Y for yeah, and then you enter. Now the cron tab will automatically be updated and you'll begin to run your script immediately. Practice what I've said for you to do, which is to run it every minute, then you won't need to wait 15 minutes to make sure it works. Control X, Y and enter. And we'll see if the next one runs, at around 8.30 or very close to it, so 8.30 or 8. So I'll fast forward the video and then we'll look for another entry that has done that. Okay, so two minutes have passed, so I'm going to have a quick look and see if it's recorded those entries. So we should have two. So how you go back into that is nano speedtest speedtest.csv and we'll scroll all the way to the bottom. And as you can see here, this is when I showed the test earlier at 8.30. Then it did one at 8.31. Then it did one at 8.32 and there's the test results. There you can see it did effectively change it because before that it was running at 15 minute intervals. So we can say it safely worked. Excellent. Now if you want to view the data in a bit more of a 
visually friendly format we can go in LibreOffice and convert that because it's a CSV you can open that there so we want to go to pi speed test and we want the CSV file if you go to open with office and LibreOffice calc this will just make it easier to visualize the data and spot any trends we'll make that a bit bigger and there we go here's all our data now now because it's in csv you could email it to your isp they're most likely got excel so they'll be able to open it up but in linux based systems or the raspberry pi you'll need to use LibreOffice instead and as you can see here's the date the time ping jitter download and upload speed we scroll to the bottom we'll see those entries that we did and it's just done another one while i'm talking so here are the most recent ones and as you can see, it's fairly consistent. There's a little drop here, but now we can start to see where any issues may lie. And as you can see, I've just got a spike here as well. So I hope you found that useful. And now you can use that to monitor your, your own internet speeds and make sure that you're getting what you're paying for. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.